Hi everybody, this is Juanito, and I'm going to show you my workstation and my synthesizer. And I'll try to make it quick and interesting. This is where I've been doing my work recently. It is an old seclusion room slash quiet room that we don't use as a seclusion room anymore because that's seclusion rooms are not allowed in residential homes like the kind I work at. So every night I uh, see there's no way to open the door on the inside. So if I shut this, uh, I'm in trouble. I have to wait for a couple of minutes to check on the <coughs> institutional box. Okay, so here's my workstation. It unfolds like origami. My tackle box, my parts bin goes right there. And then I have a trash can and I can some storage compartment and a couple of other things. I'm not a terribly organized person, but this is as organized as I can. My resistor burrito. My lower than 1K resistor burrito. My other stuff. Here's the project I'm just working on. It's the diode ladder. Um, there's going to be an instructable on that, eventually. And here's my synthesizer. Here's the power cord. There's only one power connector right here. Okay, so this is the back of my synth. All of these, the power system looks like this. This is negative power, this is ground, this is positive, and I have three uh, sort of points. And everything else goes from there on a flying bus kind of uh, arrangement. Um, the power all goes into the back of these cans. Some cans are open, like my uh, FD1 reverb unit, and my most, the module I'm most proud of. Maybe is that. It is a 909 hat. You can see the EEPROM right there. That chip right there is the one that actually has the digital sample of the crash symbol or the ride symbol on it. Here's the front of my synthesizer. My clock, because of limitations in my programming skill, I can only get a certain number of uh, beats per second. My trigger divider, this does, uh, okay, so this is uh, 24 ticks per BPM, no, per second. Oh gosh, I can't remember. But anyway, it's a MIDI, whatever MIDI is. So this is
sorry, that was really nice. It's very responsive, like, it'll be a crazy pattern like this. that I built, which I, this one only has four knobs, but it has an option for another knob. Somehow the compressor, I think it does wave folding. I've never scoped the output. 808 snare, 909 hat. That does have another EEPROM in there. My two trigger, gener trigger, um, oh, let me just turn this up so we can hear it. You can hold down the button, there's a button under the potentiometer, and that'll just do a sort of a fill. It turns out not a lot of things are... <laughs> I hiccuped. And then if you hold down the trigger button, you can make it feed all of those triggers into the memory. This is supposed to be a 100k potentiometer, and I accidentally used a 1 meg potentiometer. So this is the stock pitches for the crash. So I have two of these trigger sequencers, 808 cowbell, 808 snare, snare drum, 9 inch nails snare drum. This, all my high drums go through this. <sighs> Why is it so quiet? Um, this little, this is a stereo MS-20. Uh, I needed it to be stereo because it comes after my 
uh, one of my reverb units. Let's pick a snare up here. Um, I don't want to wake up the kids. Okay, this also has a, uh, basically a little optical VCA inside there, where if you hit this with a voltage, it will change the wet and dry mix to be, uh, to send wet through. It doesn't attenuate the dry, but you can do, you know how like King Tubby has uh, every fourth snare, uh, will hit, have spring reverb on it or something like that. That's why I built that module that way. Um, some random mixers. Here's my 303 filter. This is a diode ladder. Um, this uses BC uh, transistors, which are completely not what the 303 actually used. This uses actual original parts, which is so expensive compared to, you know, BCs or 2Ns. Um, envelope generator, sort of a utility module with a pulse stretcher and a comparator, comparator. Another my favorite reverb, I have a favorite reverb right here. This one does, you can crossfade up to just this, and then you can high filter it. And that's for drops, where you wanna have bass cut out the main mix, close down this high pass filter with plenty of uh, resonance if you want it, with the reverb as well and then cut it out. Pretty cool, anyway. Um, here's a triple VCO. I guess we can listen to that. Triple VCO has a built-in high or low pass filter, which I built the low pass, the high and low pass filters to switch over using a switch called a 4066. So um, somehow the 4066 bi-directional switch gets overwhelmed. Oops, I'm looking at the wrong module. Gets overwhelmed. So sometimes even on full close down. Some of, the, some of the signal will still get through. Switch it to high pass or low pass. Low pass. It also has a like a diode clipper for compression or for uh, saturation. Um, Originally, I built this module with a wave folder, and a triple saw VCO through a wave folder sounds horrible. If you're ever tempted to do that, don't do it. Here's a CV sequencer. Each of these knobs is a CV. The light goes around and hits the knob, and that's higher pitch, lower pitch. It has different modes. I don't remember what any of these modes are besides the one that goes in a circle. Some of me are random, I think. Yeah, so anyway, I always just use it going around in a circle. Here's my Thomas Henry 555 VCO, love it. There's another one. It can do pulse with pulse width modulation via CB. It can do hard sync, FM, uh, FM, or linear FM, 
exponential fm, of course, of course, in the fine pitch. CV triangle, saw, sine, and pulse. That's a very, 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 very good analog, full featured analog VCO. There's another one, love it too. This is my another triple saw VCO. This one's different because it doesn't attenuate each saw, each VCO. All three of them are either on or off, depending on these switches. <laughs> um, I built in a fourth VCO right here that does more low frequency for vibrato to bring that in. Uh, I never use it though because it's just really hard. Um, this is a VCO that I built. I don't remember what kind, what shape the wave is. I think it's a triangle. It has two wave folders. This is a transistor-based wave folder, and this is an OTA, um, like a basically a VCA-based wave folder with two diodes and resistors going to each op amp. So it folds the wave in a really interesting way. This is my um, ribbon controller. This is the ribbon controller's controller, which does quantization, major, minor, pentatonic, Dorian, major seventh, minor seventh, whole notes, and chromatic. These two little soft pots, these are, this is a potentiometer. You push it at a certain spot, and it divides a voltage between, you know, just like, a, I guess there's the three pins. And this is one of the parts that gets banged around most on my synthesizer, because it's right down by the ground and hits doors and stuff, so this part's actually broken. Um, if you push on it, there's a, there's a pressure sensing resistor right under here. And when you push on the thing, it opens up this, uh, sends a voltage out there, which you can use to open up a filter or a VCA. This is a two Thomas Henry VCF1s. They're really good VCFs. They're a little screamy at high resonance and high pitch. Um, here's a, this is a delay, like a PT2399 delay, which also has a high pass or low pass filter. I almost never use it because it is so, 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 so lo-fi. Here's a distortion uh, module that I made. It has Zener diode distortion, normal diode distortion. You can change the gain on that, switch between the diodes. It also has the CD4069. Um, which you can starve with this knob, turn up the gain, change. There's a, there's a couple different ways of getting distortion out of that chip, and I use them, both of them and have a mix there. And then there's a mix between diode and 4069. Complicated. It sounds pretty good. Polyfusion 4-pole high-pass filter with uh, voltage-controlled resonance. I've never found a really good use for voltage-controlled resonance. Anybody want to let me know how to use that? That'd be great. Polyfusion high pass filter, polyfusion low pass filter. Uh, these were the first really good filters that I ever built, which is, they're so old, you can see the can is not, the can lid still looks like a can lid and not like a, a dome like the rest of my can lids look. Okay, two MS-20 filters. This is not actually an MS-20 filter. It's a diode ladder, just like the one I'm gonna make an instructable on. This is a WASP filter, a dual filter. I love the way this one looks with the cool black. This is my stereo mixer that is also a ducker. Um, here's a kick drum. Every time the kick drum hits, this envelope follower goes up, this knob, turns up the gain for that that goes down to this module, which ducks everything based on that envelope. So this has uh, one, two, three channels with two stereo inputs per channel and then one extra channel that's just mono. And each of these has a VCA built into it, stereo VCAs for the top three, and of course a mono VCA for the mono channels. So that VCA gets ducked. Here's my mutable instruments braids, which I call dreads, because ha ha. Um, love this module, it's really cool. Here's my Ken Stone Psycho LFO. It's a dual, that's pretty good. Here's a mixer. Here is a low pass gate slash resonant filter that I never ever use anymore, because I think 
this the ground on this is actually positive. I think I messed that up because it has weird stuff going on. Stereo mixer, ZVHP high pass filter that I actually designed myself. Um, and it's where my kick drum goes through. Turning up the resonance and turn it, opening up the filter almost all the way gets some of the most boomy booms you can possibly get. That's a delay fish from the movie Finding Nemo, remember? It's a PT2399 delay. I never use it anymore. I should. This is a mi another mixer. You can switch between the bottom and everything else. This, these three and all the other mixers, and then these two mixers with that slider. But I never use that either. I should try to use that more often. My favorite reverb, this one, this reverb has a clock speed, which is also CV controllable. So you plug in an LFO right there, uh, turn it up, and then you can get this, whatever effect is being, uh, the, the reverb is using will wobble and go crazy. Love that module. That's my favorite. All these modules are my favorite reverb, but that's my favorite, my favorite reverb. Uh, this is a fidget spinner. Um, there's an OC optical light dependent resistor and opto resist optical resistor in there. When you turn that, you get a nice LFO out of that module. Um, here's my main headphone amp. This also has an audition. I can plug this into anything and it will let me audition it without sending it right into the mix. So that's a good option. And it's on a nice bouncy, you know, wire. I think that's my whole synthesizer. Wow. A couple things I didn't go over. Oh, here's my clap module. It's just clap one, two, snare one, two, three, nine inch nail snare, maracas, egg shaker, etc. This has a high pass filter right here, or a, yeah, a high pass filter and a low pass filter. With this much dead space, it's so funny. I really need to revisit that filter. And then of course, volume. And then push this and change the, uh, I, I like putting buttons underneath potentiometer. 